Yo, yo, what is good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Mentorship Monday with the Can't Believe I Made a Podcast. I am your high-performance mentor and podcast host, Desi Abeda. All right, so I this past week, <laughs> whole family was sick, didn't really have much of a voice, so I decided to take uh, some of my own, I guess, words against me and decided to take a break. You know, I didn't have much of a voice, so it would have been a whole lot easier for you to hear this message instead of that version of Desi that uh, sounds like he's 70 year old, years old and has been smoking for about 60 of those years. So voice is back. I'm back. Welcome to, to another Mentorship Monday. All right. So for the past 10 to about 12 weeks, we've been diving into habit formation from the standpoint of helping you to create consistency with one or two things that you feel really passionate about. Now, as a high performance mentor and a registered dietitian from a performance perspective, anytime that I have anyone in my group coaching programs or one to one mentorship, we're really trying to tackle four areas of their life. I like to think of them as like the four er four pillars rather of high performing individuals. And so the first one's always going to be we're navigating sleep hygiene. Right. The second one that we're looking at is mental conditioning and your ability to create more emotional agility. All right. Things are always going to come and go. But for you, you are someone who knows your body and knows your 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 mind enough to where you have tools and you can deal with that. The other things that we're looking at is strength conditioning or other ways for you to move your body and feel really good about it. And then that last part. And for me, it's probably one of the most important. I mean, they're all they're all important. That's why they're pillars for things that I teach is going to be nutrition. So throughout the past 12 weeks, we've been trying to create some consistency with one or two of those things inside of some of those pillars, or even just inside of helping you to create progression in your life. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So the, one of the biggest things that I tend to find is that when people are going down this path, they don't know what the next steps are. So they get to a point where a certain habit is automated, right? So you don't have to really think about it. The way that we know it's automated is that is that if you don't do it, you feel weird. And by the way, I mean, that's such a cool concept, right? You know, if you're really avidly working at something, you're getting the reps, you're, you're doing all the things that you need to, and then you get to a point where you don't even have to think about it anymore. Therein lies like, hey, you've created a new identity for yourself. So for those who are, who are creating that new identity and, and are feeling this, congratulations, you are definitely on the right path. Now, for others who are navigating this, this process, I really want to teach us how to scale up, right? Or how to see progression with some of the things that we're doing right now. But there is a caveat to this. And this is what oftentimes happen. You know, when we look at one of your old habits, it starts to become boring. And we don't really want to look at it as, as something that's boring or not high reward. We want to look at it as, hey, this is already automating. You know, if I'm if I'm making sure that I'm navigating better sleep hygiene, getting to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, if, if that's starting to get boring, that's kind of where, you know, it's time to move on. That's where, you know, that things are automating and, and this is where you can start to see progression. But there's a kicker, though, and this is where I, I tend to find with most people where they really, really mess up with where they're at. You know, if they start to get bored, they don't see it as automation. And let me go ahead and scale this up and let me go ahead and seek some progression they tend to start looking for something new or a quicker way, right? Which oftentimes tends to be their pitfall and tends to bring them back down to the level of what they were doing at first because they've lost all their momentum and they've lost all their traction. So for today, I really want us to understand, like, let's go ahead and choose evolution or progression over jumping from thing to thing. Because this is where your progression and this is where just seeing an evolution in yourself is going to take hold. And it's, it is, in fact, a process which is going to help you in the long run. And one way that we do that is we, we tend to, to, to find that thing that we're doing that's already been automated, and we start to test out the intensity or the volume of that thing. All right, so let's kind of bring you a, a little bit of a visual of what this looks like. For those who, who cannot see this and are listening to this right now, you can definitely spend some time on our IG, IGTV page. So if you're not following us at I made it pod, you'll be able to see this visual or you can uh, go to our YouTube channel that it's always in the show notes for you to see this visual, but I'm going to kind of map this out for you. So this is the Goldilocks rule. And this is something that comes from James Clear in the Atomic Habits book. It's something that I really like. I'm going to make some changes for things that we already go over and have gone over based off of some of our messaging. But for the most part, I really, really love this, this effect. So it's called the Goldilocks rule. I like to think of it as like the Goldilocks effect where you're finding a sweet spot when you know that it's time to start seeking some sort of scaling up or some sort of progression with your habits, 
All right. So let me kind of map this out for you for those that are just listening right now. So with this graph on our Y axis, we have motivation. I'm going to go ahead and change that actually, because with motivation, we know that it comes and goes. We know that it's really a lie and it's your ability to maintain willpower and understanding and really refraining from overall decision fatigue. All right. So we're going to go and replace that with willpower. On the X axis, we have difficulty. So with what we have here on our Y axis, as you increase, as you go up, your willpower goes up, right? And on the other side, your X axis, your difficulty, as you tend to go down that, that, that X axis, difficulty is going to increase. What we're trying to find here just with this visual or just with this rule is that sweet spot where we're not too bored and we're not, and it's not too complex and we're not failing all the time because that's how you know that your habit or the thing that you're looking at is, is very complex and not as simple as that if you're constantly failing. So when we try to find that Goldilocks zone from what James Clear is talking about here or that sweet spot, I like to think of it as, as that, that in the zone area where you're able to challenge yourself enough in order to, to feel challenged and you're also able to find that you're seeing winning throughout this process. So what this might look like it really in, in your life is getting you to a point where if you are someone who is really trying to work on your sleep hygiene, you've been going to bed at 9 p.m., waking up at 6 a.m., what, what, a, what a good progression might look like is to say, okay, let me go ahead and see if I can do a little bit of light planning right before bed. Plan for the next day right? Create action items, create like, Hey, if tomorrow was a success, these one or two things would happen. That's what a small progression looks like. Or even if we added it to the morning. So now that your sleep hygiene is better, we're probably going to find that we're going to see some cascading habits. So if you're, if you're able to get quality sleep, you're probably going to have enough energy to go on that walk or to implement some sort of strength training or, or exercise portion for, for, for you, or even implement some sort of gratitude practice. And if you do those things, you're probably going to find that the next best thing for yourself, which in this case, if it's exercise, you're probably going to want to eat a balanced meal, one that has an ample amount of protein, one that has quality carbohydrates, one that has color on your plate, right? One that has fat implemented into the plate. So there's just a lot that goes into it that could cascade. And so what we're trying to find is small little progressions. And it can be the same thing with your strength conditioning, your exercise, or even just your emotional conditioning as well. We're trying to find that next best thing. And that's what overall progression can look like. Now, let's let's get let's wrap our minds around some of the things that we need to take from this message. OK, first thing, repetition cures all. So if you're finding that you're getting information from your your quote unquote failings, Continue to work on the repetitions because you're either going to get one of two things. You're either going to see winning and progression or you're going to get that feedback. You're going to get that like, all right, this behavior or this routine is too complex. I need to simplify it and, and reverse engineer back again. So going back to that, that concept or rather that example that we talked about with your sleep hygiene. Now, if you're someone that's like, all right. I would really love to start <laughs> being a part of the 5 a.m. club. All right, that's a big thing right now. Being a part of the 5 a.m. club, if you're constantly finding that you're not able to do that, and in your 5 a.m., you're trying to do your gratitude, you're trying to hydrate a certain amount, uh, you're trying to do your meditation, and then you're trying to get that walk, and then you're trying to exercise all in the matter of an hour, you're doing too much. So if you're continually failing there, that's where we need to reverse engineer back. But you need the repetitions. You need to be able to get that information over so that you can better understand your habits. Now, our other big takeaway here is understanding that relationship between winning and losing. Because when you're able to see winning, you're able to see progress. You know, Tony Robbins talked about this the other day, and, and it really resonated with me. And I, and I figured it would resonate with a lot of you. He talked about how most humans in the world... They usually want one or two things. And, and one of the biggest things that they want is progress, progress in, in, any area of our, in any area of our life. So as I'm talking to you right now, if we look at different aspects of your life, your career, your relationships, your relationship with your body, your relationship with your habits, it's going to feel good in order to, to see progress in those areas, right? So here, when we look at winning, we want to make sure that there's a really good balance between being in that zone where you're seeing some winning and you're also seeing a little bit of losing so that you get that feedback. Now, if things are completely imbalanced where you're constantly winning and you're not losing, 
you're not missing out on these things, it's time for you to challenge yourself if that's the case. And on the other hand, if you're someone who is consistently losing, it's likely because the thing, your progression was either too, too much of a jump or again, going back, it's too complex. There's winning and losing in all of this. And it's no, not good nor bad. It's also, it's just information. It's data. And so when we think about this and we think about your next progression as you're getting really sound in your habits, give yourself a, a great deal of self-compassion to finish this out, to get the repetitions that you need and get the information that you need. Because another thing that we also need to think about too is that if you have another set of eyes on your habits, whether that is community, accountability, a mentor like myself, then we can start to seek progression in a way where it's consistent and it really matches for you. Because if you're trying to jump from thing to thing, it makes sense to me why you're stuck. And if you're someone who's getting bored with your habits, you don't know where to go. This is why we have this podcast. This is why I have a, a, a mentorship group for you to be able to get some of that in. All right. So as always, you know, by now I'm making sure you all doing your homework. So what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and take a screenshot of this episode. You know, you can throw it on IGTV, Facebook, whatever you need to do. Make sure that you tag me at Desi Abeta or at I Made It Pod, and let me know what your what your next routine or next habit is going to be within this progression. I want to support you in this process, but you know by now it's the application that most people need because the information is readily available. All right, so I'm glad to be back. Another Mentorship Monday. I'll catch you all on Friday with our Heroes Journey uh, episodes. Be great. Later, y'all.